Michelle Westerman is our speaker for today. Um, if you've ever said that you are too busy to start a business, I think she's an example of, of uh, not doing that because she has, uh, in 2008, she became co-owner of Johnson's Riverside um, and she is still owner of that. That's after she graduated in 2006 uh, from UND with a degree in social work. Uh, she is also on the school board, has been a school board member since 2018. Um, she has four kids and uh, started, uh, started this business, uh, Legacy Event Center, in 2000 during a pandemic when people aren't able to meet together. So I think uh, she's been able to do a really successful job with that as well. And I'm happy to introduce Michelle as our speaker for today. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, 1964, my grandparents started Johnson's Riverside. Um, it is a company for um, people who have developmental disabilities. My uncle was born with severe developmental disability. And back in the time uh, when institutions were extremely popular. And so a lot of physicians at that time would recommend that people go into institutions. You don't do a lot of visiting and you just, um, you keep your loved ones there. Well, my grandparents didn't believe in that. And so in 1950, or in, in the 1950s, or 1960s, excuse me, they went to go visit my uncle Dean in the institution. They took the whole family. And what they saw was just extremely horrific conditions. And from that point on, they really wanted to do better for the people in our community and for people with disabilities. So what they did was they just, became one of the first adult foster care providers in Pennington County. And they helped start the DAC, um, or were on the board to help start the DAC um, in our community. In 1978, my dad took over and he expanded the business from one facility and he grew it to six. So currently we have six facilities in our community that help people with developmental disabilities or related conditions. So we have 24 um, people that we support. Um, and in 2014, the state said group homes are no longer sustainable. Um, we're going to put a moratorium on the on, on group homes, which basically means that you can't open another group home in the state of Minnesota. And so they're finding other avenues or other um, things for people to do um, that have disabilities. So the goal is to have everybody live independently. Um, and our goal has really been to help as many people as we can while providing excellent care. And it's been a real challenge for us to find other ways to do that. But luckily, you know, when we found that we couldn't um, expand anymore, we decided that we were going to look at any other option underneath our um, license that we could possibly have. And what we did was basically added every single service that we could provide to our community onto our license. So that's when we really started what's called North Star Promoting Independence. And we started that in 2018. And so what we do with that program is we're basically a bridge between um, group homes and independent living. And also for the elderly, we're a bridge from assisted livings to nursing home care or independent care to assisted livings and, and nursing home care. So we provide kind of that gap in between. And I'm happy to report that since we started that program almost three years ago in February, or it was three years ago in February, that we have more people that we support in that program than we do in our facility program. And we work with a lot of seniors in our community and it's just been a true blessing to be able to provide that service. And we have seen that there is such a need and you know we can do anything in that program basically that's just going in and providing companion care to providing medication, administration, and support to taking somebody grocery shopping or meal prepping, um, just checking in with a person on a casual basis if needed. So the hours can kind of range from being there every single day of the week, or it could be one time a week for two hours or an hour at a time. So it's, it's nice that there's some flexibility in that program. Um, in 2018, you know, we had really also I went to a training called Naps and Pass, and it was really life-changing for our organization. And I think it would be beneficial for any organization um, kind of starting out. And I really believe in the value of teamwork and you know, having people that are part of your organization 
work together and come up with ways where you can see a vision of your company moving forward. And what I mean is this training that I attended was called Maps and Paths. And basically it was, um, I went there to become a trainer for people who have disabilities. And what it does is it takes you from a facility setting and works on how, how you can meet your goals or how a person with disability can meet their goals. And we really thought, well, you know, this was so life-changing. I thought, well, how can we take this and use it for our administration administrative team? Because basically what you look at is you look at your, um, your key players, your people who are going to be roadblocks or things that are going to be roadblocks, your goals for three months, your goals for six months, and your goals for a year and a half. And we had our whole admin team sit down and talk about where they wanted to see the company going without any, any, you know, um, hesitation or, or roadblocks that are in your way. If you could do anything that you wanted to do, or you wanted to see your company go somewhere, what would that look like? And so what we did was we sat down, we talked about those things and we mapped out a three month plan, a six month plan and a year and a half plan that we wanted to accomplish. And so um, I'm happy to report that within that year and a half, we have accomplished what we wanted to. One of those things was um, building an office building and providing trainings to people in our community for disability services. So uh, before the pandemic, we had actually done trainings or brought, brought trainers up here for a variety of different topics in our area, not just disabilities, but um, we wanted to make it available for the community to attend some of these trainings. And so we we're always renting out the Imperial room and it gets to be expensive. And sometimes it was booked when we needed it. And so we thought, well, why don't we do something different? And why don't we, you know, if, if building an office building is something that we wanna do, why don't we build on an event center too? Cause we felt like that was a need in our community. Um, you know, we've heard that from other people as well. so probably at the worst time possible, we built an office building and we um, also built an event space. So our event space um, finished up in August of last year. So it's almost <clears throat> gonna be a year old here, um, but we weren't able to really function with it at all um, for the first almost six months. You know, we were shut down with COVID. So. Um, but with the pandemic, you know, we needed some more help in our facilities. So it really gave us a chance to step back and um, support the people that we needed to during that time. And so how the Legacy Event Center, um, I kind of explained how it came about. So 50 years ago, we didn't have an office space for 50 years. So that was something that we really had wanted. And that's why we built the office space. And the Legacy was built because we wanted to have meetings and have a place where we could gather and we wanted to have proms for people who have disabilities and we, we just had a lot of uses for it um, in the future. But we wanted to come up with a name and it was a real struggle for us at first. Um, we originally had looked at the Elks building to purchase it and do some things down there, but we just decided that that wasn't true to kind of who we were at the, at the time. So we went back and my uncles and my um, had owned some farmland that's across from where we originally started and met where my grandpa's farm was and we wanted it to be something that um, really meant something to us and so our uncles and my father were gracious enough to um, give us six acres of land and that's where we built the office building and the legacy event center and we thought you know we couldn't be where we are today without the help of our family um, my grandfather for starting this my father for you know taking it and expanding it um, and then also the people that we've supported along the way um, who really shaped us into who we are today. And so we thought, you know, there's no better way to pay a tribute to them than to call it the Legacy Event Center. You know, we want to live a legacy for the people that we've supported and for our family, and we want to continue to do that for years to come. So I kind of like to do a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of different things. And so one of my passions is like event planning and um organizing different types of events. So something that we have at the event center is um, our event space is about 4,800 square feet. We have a capacity of like 320 people. We also have an outdoor wedding um, venue area so people can get married outside if they'd like to. And we also have um, event decor and rentals. So we have a giant storage room full of tablecloths and um, centerpieces and that sort of thing. Um, we have a catering kitchen and 
something that was really important for us when we built the office space and the legacy event center was that it all is handicap accessible. So somebody who has any mobility issues can access um, any area of our property by sidewalk. Um, there are no steps. So it makes it really um, easy for people to go in and um, use our space. Um, we also have had some partnerships. I, I firmly believe that building partnerships with other organizations is extremely important because I feel like it shouldn't be a competition. It should be something where we work together and both become successful at it. So one thing that we did was we partnered with the Hive. And so now we have a bar on site um, for any event. So if somebody can't find a bar, um, we can do it for you. So we basically provide the staffing um, because I think that's a major issue in our community is we just don't have the people to support some of these things. Um, so what we have done is we'll provide the staffing and they'll provide you know, everything else, the hive. And then we had a recent partnership with the Wired Bean. So we're also gonna have a, um, the Wired Bean available on site as well. And we're doing something similar. We'll provide the staffing, um, but we're gonna support the Wired Bean and, and um, do it that way. So we are getting very booked with events this summer. We have weddings, um, we've had banquets. And um, one thing that was important to me because we have four kids, is that you know finding a birthday party venue can be very difficult. So we have actually 10 different birthday party options for our community and we try to make it as easy as possible. So we, we provide the decorations. Um, you can do the parties with or without food. Um, and then we have a circus theme party where we decorate and kind of go all out and then you can also get prizes at the end. So um, it's been a lot of fun and we just hope that we can continue to um, serve the community. We are truly blessed um, and feel privileged to be a part of our community. And we just hope that we can continue to expand and grow and um, fill some needs and gaps um, wherever, wherever it's needed. Yeah, you guys have really, I think, done great since you had to start in the, in the uh, COVID. I mean, that's, that's a tough time to obviously try to start something up, but um, yeah. I, I know that, you know, I've, I've called and tried to book it and it's been booked and um, it's a great problem to have. A um, mm -hmm. couple of things that you said that I'd like you to maybe touch a little bit more on, you know, um, I really, I really love that you said that, you know, we're not in competition and, and we're, and, and that's kind of what this, this whole meeting is about, you know, we're mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs and we're here to help each other. We're not here to compete and my business is better than yours, or I need to do this mm -hmm. so that I can beat you. It's about how can we help each other? So I really appreciate that too. Um, can you touch a little bit more on that? Um, you said that you make goals and then, you know, how to reach them. Um, what, what were some of the smaller goals and, and did you have any obstacles when you were trying to reach them? Um, some of the smaller goals were just getting, you know, we, part of this process is you draw pictures of what you want to see. And so at the end, it was like having a line of staff waiting out the door. And I would say that is one that we, it's a continual struggle for us right. to, to have staff come in. And, you know, we've seen a, a turnover in the last five years where, you know, we never used to have the problem probably five to 10 years ago, you were able to maintain staff, it wasn't as big of an issue. And now it's just a continuous struggle. So that's one that we're still working on. And I think we will be working on in the future, but we try to find different ways to recruit staff, um, whether it's through Facebook ads, or it's through um, connecting with people that you meet on the street. I think that's that's huge. Building relationships with people in our community is, is such a huge asset um, for many different reasons. So I think um, we're gonna continue to work on it. And if we find a magic key, <laughs> we'll, we'll let everybody know. Um, but I just think, I think it will be a struggle for a while, but that's one of the smaller ones that um, we'll continually have to work on. Right. Does anybody else have any questions for Michelle? Well, comment and a question. My first comment is, um, Michelle, you and your family are great examples of what entrepreneurs do. Uh, you initially, you know, saw the problem of this, this care that was inadequate, woefully inadequate, and found a solution to that to meet that need. Uh, and that's what entrepreneurs do. They respond often to, to a need or a real problem, a pain point. Uh, and, and you did that and did it so well. And then again, with the Legacy Event Center, as you saw the need for uh, that type of space, 
Um, so kudos to you uh, and what a great example you are, you know, in, in uh, what you've done. That's, that's just a great example of what entrepreneurs do. Um, my question is, um, if you were to provide three tips, two or three tips for somebody that was going to start a business, what, what would those tips be? Okay, my first tip would probably be find people in your admin team, if you, if you have a team um, that you work well with and listen to them, pay attention to what their interests are too, because the more you get people to see your vision or you build a vision together, the stronger your um, community will be um, and your team will be moving forward. Um, the second thing I would say is no matter what you, even if you think it's too hard to attain or achieve, keep pushing through and persevering because there is a way. You know, if you have, if you can work hard and you believe in yourself and you believe in your idea, pushing through is going to be huge. And I think you can, you can make anything happen. I'm kind of an optimist by, <laughs> by nature. So I think if you set your mind to something, you can make it work. Um, and the third thing would be just finding ways to build relationships within the community, no matter what your business is, is going to be huge. And don't be afraid to ask questions, you know, along the way. I feel like the more that I have done this and, you know, I don't know every answer, but I do know some people who are very smart that might. <laughs> and, you know, relying on other people is going to be your key to success, I think. 